Welcome to this presentation on the Hub One engine. My name is Nick Bojad and over the next 15 minutes I'm going to be taking you through the engine and how it helps organizations take their customers from existing email systems and provision them with a fully working and operational Office 365 environment. What we're going to do in this session is introduce the engine and what it does, talk about the supported scenarios, give you a run through of the high level process, talks about what resources and people you need, and talk about some of the edge cases we also cover. The provisioning process actually encompasses everything that's needed to onboard a customer post the service being turned on. It also assists you leverage existing syndication partners to provision the actual core service of Office 365. The engine is a set of workflows orchestrated by Dynamics CRM Online 2011, which provides access to the Microsoft Workflow Foundation, which we've used to automate the entire process. For external web calls to third-party tools, specifically MigrationWiz that we use to do the major data migration, the Azure App Fabric service bus is used to handle external web service calls. This process automates a number of specific scenarios. There are some scenarios which are out of scope, and we expect those to be handled by systems integration partners, such as Hub One. The architecture of the engine is based on an underlying workflow engine delivered by Dynamics CRM Online 2011. There's then the Office 365 engine, which contains all the entities, fields, forms, and other items needed to understand an Office 365 migration. Then on top of that, we have the E engine for enterprise SKUs and the P engine for small business and professional SKUs. Using the Azure App Fabric, the workflow engine can call out to external tools. These are our migration tools at the moment, but can also integrate with third-party billing systems. The supported scenario for the deployment engine at version 1.0 is Office 365 E3 or Office 365 P1. This can be provisioned through multiple syndication partners, and right now we support Microsoft, StarHub, and Telstra. We've decided not to introduce directory synchronization or rich federation as part of our Office 365 deployment process. We find for most small and medium organizations this is overkill and also support can be provided by partners or Hub One if required as on-site support is actually required. The system allows us to migrate from BPOS, Exchange on-premise, IMAP, POP, GroupWise, Hosted Exchange, Zimbra and Google Apps. Lotus Notes is not currently supported due to complexities with applications, but we expect to be supporting it in a future version. The mail flow, once the system is delivered, we expect the mail flow to flow from the internet directly into Office 365. We don't currently support rich coexistence, and we intend that to be delivered by partners as a custom project. We also deliver a SharePoint site and link configuration for the customer, based on a template or based on the customer vertical. There is migration of data and customization, but that's only once again supported by the partner channel due to the fact that interface with the customer is desired to make that happen correctly. Let's work through the process so you understand that. The process really works on the number of steps below. We establish the service, set up domains, set up users, migrate the data, move the MX record, refresh the final migration, and configure the desktop. And we'll talk about that in a bit more depth now. So for the service, first of all, we gather the prerequisite customer information, validate that their designator for Office 365 is correct, and order the services. A bunch of workflows run to ensure that the service has been provisioned, because different partners have different SLA times on delivering the service. Once the service is up and running, we have Office 365. We're then able to work with domains. So we request from the customer access to the DNS registrar. If they don't provide us that information, we can actually use um, inform them of the various records that need to be created. We register the domain with Office 365, make sure that works, create the records, and validate that the domain is effectively set up, the first step before we move forward. Once we have Office 365 in with the service and domains, we then move to the users, and we send the customer out a well-formed spreadsheet for them to fill in their user list. We import that into the engine, which then provides provisions these users in Office 365 and in our migration tools. We do a cross-check verification to make sure those imports have worked and we now have Office 365 set up with all the users in it, but at this stage no data. To migrate the customer to Office 365, 
The first thing we do is get information on the legacy environment. We validate and connect to it. Then we establish administrative credentials. We don't actually need them. We can get the users to log in to a secure site to give us their credentials for migration. Once we have that, we define some performance characteristics. For example, how many simultaneous migrations can we do? We trigger the migration and we watch and resolve migration errors and warning. When we've done that, the major migration is complete. The users are in Office 365, the domain is working, and they have all their email, calendars, contacts, and tasks. Once we've done that, we enable Link, turn on Federation and MSN Federation. We set up SharePoint, and we communicate the new services to the customer. And we start commencing the end user communication plan. We also do some validation steps to ensure that the services are operational and we send instructions for data migration for the customer. We also send end user instructions for Office 2010, Link Client and the Office 365 desktop applications. We then ask the customer if they're ready to move the MX record and when they are, we move the MX records and validate that Mailflow is working with Office 365. So now the customer has a fully operational Office 365 environment. Because there's normally a delta between when we move the MX records and when we migrated the data, we do a refresh migration just to make sure that the data is fully up to date in the customer environment. We then send detailed and customized instructions of how to set up the customer for on-site, either the IT pro or the end users. We send that out and they're carried out the back end. We then check that they've carried out those instructions and the users are running, which basically means they're fully migrated to Office 365. We then do a bunch of verifications to make sure they're in the right place and we can move them on to ongoing support. So the key things are all these users using the service. Is the mail flow correct? Do they have the correct SKUs and users? Are the domains validated? Are the DNS records correct? Have they configured their desktops? And are all applications, phones and devices working? Now you look at the process and you go, well, this is a fairly big process. This is going to take a bunch of time. But using the automation on the engine, we actually reduce the time taken to about three and a half elapsed weeks from the day we start. Once that's happened, we actually, that's elapsed time, but we don't actually use a lot of people. There's a lot of technology going on. There's a lot of engine doing work. There's a lot of migrations, but there's very little engineering time, which means we can use our engineers to service multiple customers. In addition, all of the different tasks are atomized so that nobody actually ends up having to work a whole migration. They can just pick up tasks as they occur and deliver them and the process, process backend and the workflow looks after and makes sure that everything is correct. Obviously, there's a bunch of exceptions that can happen and we've created those in an escalation workflow within the engine. The escalation workflow, that you, the workflow which you've just seen, is the best case. It's when everything works as desired. But the key is edge cases. How do we handle domains failing, provisioning failing, migration failing, legacy systems falling over, the network not working, the customer not getting back to us, DNS failing, or issues with existing machines um, or existing systems integrated with the legacy mail platform. For example, multifunction copiers, CRM, ERP, etc., etc. The engine's actually been designed to understand those escalations and escalates. And also, because we have a workflow-based escalation, we can stop the process at any time and send in somebody on site without the workflow getting upset and moaning at us. So it's all integrated together. That's the presentation. Thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions, you can email us at nick at hub1.com.